week is we are seeing places starting to reopen. Um, here in Wisconsin, in Madison, Wisconsin, um, we're planning to go to a phased reopening, a stage of reopening um, where we have a limited number of people allowed in one place on Tuesday morning. And so we are getting a lot of questions about that. And I know a lot of other places are also beginning to reopen. So let's talk about how do we think about this reopening um, process in light of the fact that we still don't have a vaccine and we won't for some time. So um, to make it a little more specific, Amanda, um, I know you tackled this question yesterday on the radio. So uh, how do we think about safer, um, safer socialization, so safer being social uh, for this holiday weekend in the beginning of summer? Yeah, this is a big issue in Wisconsin. So I live in a different part of Wisconsin in uh, Milwaukee area, and uh, we've already opened up uh, in the suburbs or over here. So we are moving from um, the safer at home order, as many states are, which was an effort uh, to have a population level wide intervention that stopped transmission of infection. And now our state, as well as many others that are reopening are moving to where we are gonna have to sort of individually think about how we can reduce our risks of infection as we start to branch out um, into more social interactions. And so um, in many places, uh, reopening is not really occurring because we met the metrics that we're supposed to, um, and particularly around building up our testing capacity and our contact tracing capacity, which is really what can supplant um, those kind of stay at home orders and what we need infrastructure wise. So it's a good idea to be cautious as we re-enter. Um, just because things are available to us, you know, doesn't mean we necessarily need to jump out and do them. We can be more strategic in how we sort of re-enter into um, activities and interactions. And so something that we talked about on Dear Pandemic on some of our posts was this idea of expanding our bubble. That's a good way to start. So if you have been isolating with people in your household, um, you might find another household that you can sort of join with and make a bigger bubble. And we talked about some of the things you want to think about. If you have children, this could be a way that, you know, child care centers and camps may not be available this right away this summer or if at all. So what are we gonna do if we have to keep working from home and how are we gonna entertain our kids who are no longer doing distance learning? And can we just sustain what we've been doing for two months with you know, families trying to juggle all of that? Personally, I'm feeling a little intimidated by that idea. So um, I think you know, if you can find a family that you might link up with who has kids that are the same age as your kids who have some of the same interests and maybe make an arrangement where you sort of share childcare duties, um, that could be a great way to have a gentle re-entry and sort of start to expand your bubble. Um, you know, I think it would be important to set ground rules. So what does it really mean? Who else are you I, um, socializing with or not socializing with? Will you see grandparents? Will you, you know, let all the neighborhood kids come over in the backyard and have popsicles? So you, you wanna set those ground rules so there's no disappointment or confusion over what exactly you kind of are agreeing on and you probably need to revisit them over time as well. Um, and then as we start to build our interactions up, you know, it's good to have a consistent group of people better than a mixture of people that you start to interact with, right? Keeping it small and similar across days. Um, and that, you know, prevents some of the cross pollination in our communities that we're worried about will lead to um, community transmission. And it, it makes it easier if for some reason someone in your bubble got exposed, it's much easier to recall who you were in contact with when a contact tracer calls you. Um, so these are like some of the, you know, ways if we want to step out slowly and carefully, that's one option that we could consider. Great, thank you. Yeah, I we have been making plans uh, it, within my family. A lot of the nerdy girls have um, young children or older children at home or both. And uh, so we all really feel for all the families out there who are trying to figure out how to make this work over the summer. And we personally, in my family, we have decided to forego camp and childcare, uh, like a nanny kind of situation for the summer. We're just gonna try to make it work with a partner family. And so we are trying to negotiate. And I'll just say that um, I want to echo this idea that it needs to be very clear 
what the boundaries are of how wide that circle is going to get on both ends. And we have already faced a number of really awkward social mm -hmm. situations. And uh, I think that's something we all just need to be willing to have open communication about. And we've also agreed within our, our um, buddy families to just revisit it all the time, you know, all the time. Oh, we had, you know, we accidentally, um, my kids ran over into my next door neighbor's yard. Are you concerned about this? And um, if so, what do you want to do next? And we, we literally just talk about it a lot. So that'll be really um, key. I think. Yeah. yeah. And, and it's just, it will continue to evolve constantly. So I think that ongoing communication is really important. Um, Lindsay or Allison, anything you want to add here? This really is one of the most frequent questions we're getting. I think um, to build on what Amanda said, I really like the, the small and similar uh, rules and then trying to think of one to add uh, to emphasize the importance of being outdoors as much as possible. Maybe it's sunny, small, similar, and sunny. Um, <laughs> yeah. There you go. Three S's. <laughs> Three S's. Um, and, and I think the other challenge, of course, is that, that everyone's going to be doing this in their own way. And so that idea of flexibility and um, constantly sort of renegotiating is really important, especially when, you know, right now, as justice places are starting to open up in Philly, we're still a couple of weeks away from, from leaving the red zone. You know, you see people outside kind of cheating um, and it's, it's, it's hard to know sort of what to do when like other people aren't doing what they're supposed to do. Um, and just remembering what we do and don't have control over uh, in our lives, I think is an important piece. Agreed, three S's. <laughs> <I like it. laughs> Yeah, or maybe four, space, right? So space. Even, yeah, space. space, right. Still thinking about social distancing and even in the 